All right, we call the meeting to order. So at this point, we're missing Kurt and Marion. Everybody have a chance to take a look at the agenda? Comments, suggestions, motion? Move we'll approval and not necessarily in that order. Okay, motion to approve, not necessarily in the order presented. Second. And seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the agenda, not necessarily in this order? Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passed. Uh, everybody have a chance to all the date for the next meeting. Anybody got that on your calendar? 16th. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, minutes. Any discussion on minutes? I move approval. Second. Minutes have been moved and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor of the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion for the um, Rich, can I ask? Yes. Karen Rose is waiting for us to um, call her. We set it for approximately um, 6.40. So if I would request that we move to that item and get that dealt with so that she, she's not holding. Okay. And you want to, Karen is? Karen Rose is um, one of the members of the Library Strategies um, consulting group that we've, enga that we've engaged um, to help put together a, a fundraising effort. And um, she's actually their uh, fundraising uh, expert and is the person who uh, drafted the letter and brochure which uh, were available on the website. And um, the moving forward was contingent on the board approving the materials that would be distributed. And um, Karen is available to answer any questions we might have once we call her. <laughs> okay. Everybody have a chance to take a look at the invitation? All right. The solicitation, I guess, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, and the flyer. Do we have a chance to take a look at that? It's not a letter. Beg your pardon? I saw your letter. Oh, okay. And then there was a brochure. Redefining well. library for the 21st mm -hmm. century? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or was there any like reason or how did they just Well let, let's get Karen on the phone so she can answer the questions because she's the one Okay. I was kinda looking I didn't stay for the whole retreat and I was wondering did this come out of the retreat or was it linked or is this just their well, I think, observation and I think it's their it's probably a distillation of everything they've learned. Okay. I okay. but I, I was would curious I would certainly question. think that it was informed by the retreat. Um, I, think it, I think it's very good. We got a little professional help in, uh, in this year's strategy. Mm -hmm. so. Well, right. just kind of fit in with the retreat. Right, right, right. Yeah. Was piggybacked off of that because well, of I would think that it, you know, she did it after the retreat, so. Do um, we want to share the retreat? Before? I think we'll do that later. Oh, okay. Okay. So I would move approval of the brochure and letter. Okay. Second. I'll second. second. All right, and we may not even have any any questions for her, but she said she'd be, be available. Okay, and we were thinking it's pretty straightforward, but she I think volunteered it's very well too well. Very pointed. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, am I supposed to do something other than? Um, what's it say? Nine to get out or something? Enter number, yeah, is it like nine to get out?
up on the agenda uh, for approval of, um, of the letter and the brochure to go out. Um, it has been moved and seconded, but we wanted to get you online here in case there were any questions as we go through the discussion. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any comments, discussion, anything? I think it's very well written. I think it's a good point that we are re trying to redefine and keep defining what a library is and offer numerous services and variety of community people. So I just want to comment. I think it's very well written and I, I like it. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? No? All right. We have a motion on the floor. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval on the letter of the letter and the brochure going out for our annual fund campaign, say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion prevails. Nice job, Karen. All right, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Very Perfect. Much. Thank you. Appreciate you being available. All right, no problem. We'll right. talk tomorrow. Good rest of the meeting. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. And this was going to go out before December 1st. As soon as we can get it out. If we could get it out by Thanksgiving, yeah, yeah. the sooner the better. Okay, um, citizen comments. Guess who? <laughs> that sounds like Gloria. Hello, hello, hello. And because you were late getting here, the reason I have on all of this is to honor that child up in Brainerd, uh, no, Bemidji, that died on the on the ice on Saturday. Fourteen or thirteen or fourteen years old. Yeah. He had a hidden heart thing that nobody knew anything all about. The so NHL asked everyone to wear their colors today. So I am. Anyway, we're up to. $40,000 already. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Now, nice and we still have Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and then some kind of a ball game in January. Yeah. Yeah. So please, you know, stop by Family Fresh, tell them hello, thanks for everything, and that's all. I do want to throw, I, who, does anybody here live in North Hudson? I don't know who. Anyway, there's a nice little shop that opened up up there called the Corner Store. And it's a single lady. And it's really, she's starting out. So next time you need something on Sunday afternoon, go over there and get a loaf of bread or whatever it is. She's nice. She needs our help a little bit. Okay. But that's all. Okay. So now, should I stay for all this? Are you going to be talking about things that I can't hear? Not in an open not, meeting. Not in an open meeting. Okay, well good. Then I'll take, no, not take the notes. All right, thank you. Bye. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. Yeah, Enjoy. Thank you. Be careful driving. And by the luck. Be glad you're not up in Buffalo. Oh yeah. my God, six yeah. feet already. Yeah. Thanks, Gloria. Oh, you're welcome. Right. My pleasure. Greetings, everybody. I recall many hours in this room in the past, not too far in the past. Uh, I'd like to uh, approach this board about one of its decisions in its, in its budget for next year and address the issue of uh, the board's decision uh, with the blessings, as I understand it, of the four municipalities to not pay our neighboring libraries for our residents' use of those libraries. And we're all in a 
countywide system whereby the county pays our library something like $80,000. So we benefit from this countywide system when people in Troy, people in other communities outside of our four municipalities check out our books, use our services. We're going to get we're supposed to get a check in February for $80,000. So that's part of the library system. And back when we asked to become a joint library, we asked for permission and we said, and here's the rules that we'll play by. When you're giving us this money, when these other people visit our library, we will in turn not cause any harm to the county, other residents, and we will pay the neighboring libraries. We will pay River Falls, we will pay Somerset, we will pay Roberts, we will pay New Richmond, and we would even pay Baldwin. And over the course of the last 10 years or so, the county has paid to this library $502,999. And we've paid out, every year except this year, 244,659. So if I do the math, we take in two bucks of shared revenue and we pay out one dollar. So that sounds like a pretty good deal. It doesn't seem right to say we'll accept your money, but we won't pay anything back. Now I know this library has always been strapped for funds, and I commend the fundraising effort, and I'm sure I'm going to contribute to that too. But one of the areas that I would suggest that this board not look for money is in the budgets of our neighbors, that we should manage our budget ourselves without impacting our neighboring libraries to their detriment. $29,000 hit to River Falls, $9,000 hit to New Richmond, a heavy hit to Roberts. These are our neighbors. And if we're going to take money from the county, how is it not right that we contribute back? I don't have an answer for how it's right that we do this, other than we make excuses that we have the legal authority to do so. And I would even question that. And I know, Rich, last night I left, I didn't think it was still on the agenda for the city council member uh, meeting. So I, I looked on that agenda and I didn't see where that would be discussed again. And I got a call that the city council did hear from its uh, attorney on the issue of the legality of uh, forcing these payments. But I'll, I'll hand out for you uh, a message that I got from uh, the corporate counsel for the county. And I'll leave a copy with this. And it says, Roy, to my knowledge, our office, this is the corporate counsel, has never issued an opinion to the city of Hudson or the Hudson Joint Area Library regarding the subject of reimbursements owed to the neighboring libraries of the Hudson Joint Library. I certainly never issued such an opinion. I am sure they are interpreting my legal opinion to the Board of Supervisors to mean that they have no final obligation to the affected libraries. So uh, Scott, uh, Scott Cox's uh, letter to the Board of Supervisors said the county cannot take direct action to require that this library make payments. Such, but for this board to interpret that Scott Cox's opinion to the Board of Supervisors uh, gives you authority, uh, that's misguided, he says. And he also went on to say, I have indicated there is support under Wisconsin law that a third party beneficiary, such as the five neighboring libraries, to a contract may have a cause of action against parties to a contract when their benefit has been eliminated 
through an amendment to the contract for which the third party beneficiary did not consent to. Whether that doctrine would apply in this case was not uh, at issue in his opinion. So he's at least said there's this third party beneficiary provision out there. So I researched personally the third party beneficiary rule and just a couple comments. This is from, interestingly enough, a case decided in uh, 2012, and it's Badger State versus Keller Construction. And you'll remember Keller Construction, who remodeled our own library. But they were involved in a, a lawsuit a couple years ago, and the Court of Appeals said, third party beneficiaries come up a lot for a subcontractor needs to recover money. It says the third party beneficiary doctrine is a contract doctrine that is well established in Wisconsin and it refers to a case called Severson versus Milwaukee. And just one more comment on that. And that's where a third party beneficiary is never a party to a contract. And so the parties to the contract can always re-agree to change things such as the four municipalities have done. They've re-agreed, well, let's just take that, out of the, take that out of the contract. But it says, neither in this case, neither one nor both of the parties can thereafter change the situation as regard the third party without its consent. So for a third party rights to have any meaning at all, it means that the contracting parties can't adversely affect the rights of that third party beneficiary. So what would have been required, and of course it's never, this will never be proven until it goes to court, but what may be required is that when we were thinking about making that amendment to the joint library agreement, that perhaps then those five libraries should have been brought in and said, here's why we're doing this, Maybe we should phase this in. Here's why we're doing this. Would you consent to allowing us to change? But I don't think that was ever approached. I think the four contracting parties got the opinion of counsel on their own and acted accordingly. I don't know, uh, Rich, because I didn't see the tape, whether Kathy McKintrick mentioned the subject of third-party beneficiary claims. I don't know if she did or not. I understand that she just said in the contract you have the right to amend and didn't mention the third party thing. But as I mentioned last night, it's not a matter of legal right, it's also a matter of what's right. And going back to what's equitable and what's fair to our neighbors, I just don't see how you can manage our budget by taking it out of our neighbors. So that's my that's my comment. Thank you. Do you have any material here? I'd be happy to. I'd like to make a comment um, under public comment, if I could. I don't think you're permitted to be a board member. I can step off the board and I can make a public comment as a citizen of the community. Uh, well, that's a new one on me. Um, uh, for the minutes I step down from the board, please. Can you, hear that? you just resigned? I'm stepping off the board for the moment to make a comment. Is the meeting ended? No. T typically, the uh, participants are the board members in discussion, right? Sorry. There's no discussion here, right? This is citizens' comments. No discussion, no debate. I'd just like to make a comment as a citizen. Something that I saw. I would like to go on record and commend one of our members, Marion Shaw, for standing up for the library at a recent city council meeting. A former member of the library board was somehow elected to the county board, called this library a failed experiment as he asked the city to donate funds to adjoining community libraries to make up for the shortage caused by us when we ended the practice as we could not understand the origin the original of the requirement in the first place. Marion spontaneously stood up for the library stating that we were a model of efficiency 
that other county libraries should eliminate or should emulate best services for the least cost, best value for the taxpayers. Just look at our local circulation rates. Marion went on to say, the county should strive to have other libraries follow our lead as we balance our budget to stay in this facility with the resources that we have before us. This person should remediate his or should rededicate his personal and county board efforts along these lines as the experiment was indeed was failing as long as he was on the board. Thank you. Respond to no, you're not. Question. Next. No, you're not. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us, right? Are you back on the board? I am I'm back on the board. Thank you. I would like to use please look at it. All right. It's just like recusing yourself from a vote. You have to fine. do that in its own board. That's fine. Um. All right. Let's all regather our thoughts. Um, any any further citizen comments? No, nope, hearing none. We'll move on, uh, Linda. Um, this lead to change that was the title of the conference I went to, and you were supposed to pick up ten names or words that you believe is why you're on the library board. Are you here so people can have access to material? Why are you on the board? Then you're going to reduce it down to six and then four. And this, a lot of the words are the ones that we, we see in our strategic plan already. But it was just an exercise where, okay, why are you here? Well, even if it was for the directors and the support staff, what's going on? And that's why I put it on there. Just to have you try it out and see just exactly where do you stand here. It's just a, it's on your own. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you know, we've never had a... Is there a, anything you want us to do with it? You want us to... No, you can do it on your own. Is this homework? Can we fill this up and give it back? <laughs> All right. But then you're going to have to do the six. And then you're going to have to do the four. It's just for your own okay. knowledge. Can we all stand up and share with yeah. you? Why am I here every month? Do I believe that people should get access to information? Do I believe, you know, the library is an outstanding public service? And then you keep bringing it down until you don't have to fill that. But it kind of gives you a, maybe more of a value statement for yourself and why you believe in our library. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm not tallying the comments or uh, your sheets. But we, this, this last month, we had 90 new patrons come in and register. Uh, last year we had 1,100, so I'm assuming we'll get pretty close to that again this year. But you do lose, because like right now, I did send down to the Moore system to purge all the inactive people that are older than three years. So you'll be noticing a little bit of a difference. Okay. There's no way to track the use of the library with um, beyond circulation, is there? So if somebody just comes in and uses a resource, reads the paper, reads the paper, <laughs> reads value line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, but they're they're use they don't appear as active unless. Yeah, right. Okay. They get counted as visitors then, do they not? I, mean, that's oh, I have door visitors. Door. Yeah. yeah, but we don't know specifically yeah. who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But I do know there's a young lady, well, from Bayport, and she was on the Right. So, I will tell you this though. 
One day I was taking a photo of a little tiny girl out here and she was reading her book and I went over here to take pictures over there, over there. I mean, it was a little while and she kept reading that book, very intent. Finally I said, where is your mommy? Sleeping? <laughs> and I thought, oh no. And I said, who brought you here? Daddy. <laughs> and I just assumed it's going to be the mom. I did go on a conference the first week in November, and there was a lost child here. The child and the mom always walked from 6th Street down. She could not see her mom, so she walked home. She was four years old. We had the police and everybody else looking for this little girl. Mm -hmm. And she went up the hill, and she went. Oh, my God. Oh. I know. That's the first time that's ever happened. Across 2nd mm -hmm. Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah, across the street. Yeah, a busy street. <laughs> but she's, they've always walked, so I'm sure she understood the lights is coming up. Okay, card holders. Well, we keep maintaining. The village right now is at the same number it was in September as far as the number of residents and card holders from that municipality. It is slowing up a little bit, but it's also getting pulled out. <laughs> so. Okay, um, the downloadables. You know, we talk about our circulation of print materials and audiovisuals by now, but we already have a total checkout of 18,000 e-books and music rent. So uh, I'm, I have allocated um, when I put this funds this year, and I've done it for the last couple of years where I do allocate a certain amount of funds go to e-books e and audiobooks that are downloadable. I think this population, uh, I think they're using it to the level that's higher than most of the other libraries, so I think I should do that. So, Linda, those, the, the, currently they're not part of this whole process of reimbursement for use. Right. Um, so, so what is my question? <laughs> My question is, are, is most of the downloading being done by people from their homes? Yes. So we wouldn't really know where someone was. Or if someone, but they would have to be a um, Hudson Library patron to do the downloads. Okay, so there wouldn't be any use, but Okay, so, but uh, somebody in the town of Troy could have a library card mm -hmm. and could download books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like they could have a River Falls card and download. Right. Is there any limit on the number of library cards you can have? Can you have one for Well, oh, you're only supposed to have one. Okay. You cannot have more than one. Okay. So, okay. okay. We do catch every so often someone might have two. For two different libraries. Right. Okay. Or here, by mistake. Yeah, right. Yeah, and right. usually, uh, we, the fact we have the driver's license put in, and that will trigger if there's a duplicate in the system. Okay? Thank you. And I've added 5,000 items this year, and 89% are print materials, and 11% are the EV materials. And um, right now we're at total circa 231,214, and that's in up to October 31st, and we had 300,000 at the end of the year last year. So we probably won't get as close to this we should. So. Uh, Mary did not have, Mary does have her statistics here. She had, 29 programs and 623 in the Any questions on the rest of this that I have to talk to you about? I've gotten the percentage and the number of items and the different circulations for different areas of the library. For example, adult prints, you know, 46% of that is circulating. Children's print is at 40, at 36%. But any questions on that? Okay. Um, I 
think that's all for right now. Right? What are you looking at there, Mr. O'Connor? I'm just following along. <laughs> Give me your Looking at the child print percent of collection versus percent of circulation. Yeah. Um, but it gives you a lot to think about. Yeah. I, I have moved the rental books to a different location just to see if we can't up the circulation of the rental books. Um, one of the comments somebody made and the survey that went out to the public was we didn't have enough of the high demand titles. Well. And that's also why I need to go to Eau Claire on Friday is we have 10 days circulation is what it stands at. We would like to increase it to two weeks or three weeks. Uh, we have mm -hmm. had comments that we're not able to get the book read in 10 days. And it, it was, depending on what day of the week you check out, you may not have. And freedom with the weekend. And I believe that's all for me at this time. I think I've got other agenda items. Yes, though. you have. Yes, I do. Well, okay. Discussion and helpful action on full time and permanent part time wages for 2005 15. When you approve this budget, and I handed it out to you over there under all that stuff. When we approved the budget, we approved it with a 2% increase for the permanent part-time paraprofessional librarians. I need you to make a motion that that's, that you are in agreement with this increase of 2%. It's for my protection and for your protection so that I don't exceed the amount that's been allocated. It's just the same as anything else on your list. This is advice from Devin, right? Yeah. But he, he, yeah he, it's like anything else on the budget. It's an expenditure. I need a motion that yes, this is. When do you want it effective? It, the first of the year, January 21st. Okay. We'll make a motion to approve a 2% increase for those people effective first of the year. Second. Okay. Uh, two percent um, increase for these people has been moved and seconded for 2015, again January 1. For the discussion, just under discussion, it might be worthy to note that the, the finance committee reviewed that and, and, and made a favorable recommendation to the board. Okay, good point. Discussion, hearing none, all those in favor, aye, aye, aye. opposed, abstain. Motion prevails. The next is your review. Oh, good. Well, where's the job? <laughs> Everybody so, speak up. <laughs> so if I can probably take the lead on the on the discussion. Uh, I just it our goal is to have the review completed, this is the review for the year 2014, and to get it completed by the end of January. And that would be a, a timely review. Uh, last year we were several months behind that. So um, I suggested that we have a discussion now so we get um, moving on it so that we can be more timely. Last year, um, I distributed um, copies of um, Linda's um, job description, and, um, there's a, and there's a review document, and sent that to all the board members, and asked for their input, and then um, I consolidated that, and um, on my own, which I don't think is a good idea. I think there should be two people involved in, in putting the review together. Um, and then um, brought it back. I think we approved it at the end of March, and I reviewed it with her, with Linda in April. So it would be much better if we could speed that process up. Okay, timeline? Well, um, I think it's the process. Do people want to continue that kind of process so that it is board input 
Um, should we should the input from anyone else be sought? Um, and I, well, actually, I did seek the input from the friends. Um, the I think the president of the friends. Um, I didn't. I believe I did not seek the input from the president of the foundation, and I don't remember why. But so, um, I think we need to agree on the process, and it would be wonderful for. I mean, I'm willing to to help with the problem. Mm -hmm. um, if you would want me to do that, but I would like somebody else to join me. I would be delighted to have you take that on. And who is everybody put their head down there? Who is uh, who shares the personnel? <laughs> we don't really know. Um, <laughs> it has been, uh, you know. Dan has helped me on several other yes. years. And he's been somewhat of a shadow committee, I think, for some <laughs> yes. time now. Um, but historically, it has been under the purview of policy personnel. Um, and in uh, years back, I can go all the way back to when uh, Dan Gavin was um, uh, on the board, that we, uh, we felt that it uh, shouldn't be restricted to just the policy of personnel committee, that the board should have opportunities uh, you know, for input. And as a result, uh, shortly thereafter, when Barb was the board, why um, she expressed an interest in it. And, and actually, to her credit, uh, has sort of led the you know the, the charge, so to speak, in doing that. Uh, certainly, I, I, I still think it belongs categorically under policy and personnel. Uh, but I think having someone maybe you know who's not on the committee uh, be responsible for it, and that we do it more as a complete a complete board, uh, I think that's probably more effective, uh, and it garners you know, greater perspective. So. Uh, that said, I would work with uh, okay. in, in the process. Okay. Okay. So you guys figure out how you want to do it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And, and um, but any input you have with regard to the process is most welcome and, and helpful. So that. Um, okay. Well, I think it would be. I, w I would expect that we would be ready to hand out whatever, tell people what the process is and give them yeah. at our next meeting, right? Yes. That so. in, December in December we would, yeah. here's what we planned, here's, here's the deadline for getting your feedback to us. Okay. Have we always used the same format, the question here, or has there been a different process in the past? And, and, Use the same one. It was it was significantly reviewed and rewritten. But it still, uh, was a question here. Yeah. Right. Just to the board. Yeah. And it was considered, uh, in many respects, the input it was obviously was confidential, uh, and and we uh, consolidated and summarized. Uh, we didn't necessarily come back verbatim with things that board members, you know, had, had said. I was just thinking maybe to include like this meal or somebody, the city worker she works with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with was one thought. Yep. In addition to us. Sure. I think we can do that. That's a good idea. Okay. Further discussion? Is that it? Okay. Charitable giving. I handed out a policy that I worked up on charitable giving, and I did it simply because we're doing another fundraiser, and we still have never completely created a policy on this. Um, I swiped stuff from different policies. We do have what's called the gifts and memorial policy, and then I noticed that says 2004 with a bunch of question marks, so I don't know if that even did get approved. Um, so then I created this just because what do, what do we do if someone walks in here and says they want to, and what are our guidelines of acceptance? 
um, do donated items, uh, material items, and plan giving items. So, does it explicitly say that um, that the board has the authority authority to accept gifts? Does is that I mean? It certainly it's implicit, but does that need to be explicitly said? Uh, I'm just thinking about, um, and I think we took real estate out because <laughs> real estate is probably the 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 greatest the, the gift with the most likely problems in terms of. You know, Hazardous waste, or or whatever. I mean, that's that's the one. But um, if if someone gave us a designated gift of a hundred thousand dollars to oh, what what outlandish thing might they ask us to do? Um, we should have the right to say no, thank you. Right. Um, what well, it does. Yeah. It, it does, uh, one of the things it says here um, uh, under that, that title of gifts, donations, and requests, after, well, the heading is the Hudson area, um, John Lacker will accept the following types of gifts, and if there are bulleted items there, then at the bottom of that list, where it says the library board will make every effort to adhere to the wishes, it seems to me that it's somewhat implied there that we do have. Um, the authority in that respect to uh, make some decisions relative to what they want to donate and what it's donated for. So restricted versus unrestricted. Yeah. Right. Right. And is it is it does it need to be more explicitly stated or is it implicit? I'm not sure the legal part. Right. If if I donate something and I want it very specific. And I do not know that you can change that. Do I have, or my state have, the power to pull that back? In? Well, I think we would reject it. We wouldn't accept it and change the intent. Yeah, we so that's what the statement kind of says. You'll do the best to use it the, the way you want to. The um, I have no idea where you know where the language came from, but it, it's I've seen this before where uh, restricted gifts. Uh, go for some type of program that ceases to exist somewhere down the line and um, you don't have the donor available any longer whether they're deceased or can't be found and uh, at that point in time legally you have the ability to change the intent the purpose of the money um, otherwise you can go to the state and ask if it's okay Right. I mean, you had you get to a certain amount, I don't know if it's fifty thousand dollars. If the gift is more than fifty, if you change the in, change the intent, I think you need a court to say that's okay. Or you can't do it. So this is just a, a, an internal policy. We still right. have to follow right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's what that come right. up from anybody. Right. Well, I like that last sentence, but maybe the intro should, intro should be the Hudson Area Joint Library may except the following types of gifts. Okay, yeah, okay. You know, I mean, there, there's your out. There's a, there's a clear out. Yeah. Do we, do we have, this begs the question, <coughs> do we have the system in place uh, for acceptance of um, stock, for example? You know, and I was going to, pardon me, I was going to kind of defer to you because you were talking about a year or so ago about, about uh, I don't know, these, these the beneficiary annuities, and, annuities and, and those right. kinds of things. That you're very familiar with it. I mean, I have very limited knowledge in that field, or because some of this stuff is is along kind of those lines, charitable trusts and blah blah blahs and things that I know nothing about. I chase electrons for a living. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I would kind of defer to you on some of those. Well, it, area, normally those we, areas, would, you know, we would have a policy in place, and, yeah. and in particular, I mean, it's one thing if you have a charitable gift annuity. Generally, what happens is the, uh, the we would be the annuitant, and uh, 
and um, a check would be would be cut to us. That's that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, th same thing with if we were the beneficiary of a trust or something like that. Stocks and bonds on our hand is a whole different ballgame where uh, we would need to have an account that could accept these. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, we <coughs> on the occasion of receiving a stock transfer. I mean, it's pretty quick to get a well, relatively quick to get a um, an account set up. I mean, we want it. I my. So at what point do you exercise the option on the stock? Then well, the stock you have a policy. You and Betty I mean, um, just to use the reference of the church, I'm a financial secretary, and we, we're increasingly receiving stock as, as contributions. So our policy is that we sell immediately. Receive and sell. And so that there's this close pro um, linkage because the, the um, donor um, their tax uh, credit is based on the day that they transfer. So we actually have it set up so that we, in many cases, we sell within hours because we've got the, the link, we've got the communication going on from the donors to the, to the church. So we but have, we don't have a policy that says that. No, no, we do not have a policy. policy at this point. But right. they're pulling this and, and or something that maybe need to be yeah. addressed in this. Yeah, I mean, as, as we move forward in fundraising, I mean, and that certainly, um, that certainly could be, um, I mean, it actually doesn't even talk about stock, does it? No, it just references it as a bullet point. Um, yeah. But that would be, that, I mean, the, I think that we probably need to have a policy in place on that. I right, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think that's... I, Real estate, stocks, bonds. Yeah, that it should be... Um, converted as quickly as possible to cash. Right. Any gift should be converted as quickly as possible to cash. So that there's no attempts to play the market. <laughs> what if you had what if you had someone who gave you a gift of stock that where they said we want you to hold the stock and uh, and dividends would be, you know, we want you to be um, putting the dividends into your budget. I'm not familiar with any organization that allows that. Okay, so it needs to be, again, stated yeah. in, a, in an acceptance policy. Yeah, that so once, it, once, it's, once it's ours, it's ours. I mean, if the, if the stock is transferred to the library, then the library owns the stock, and okay. would that come under the, the last sentence? Make every effort to it yeah. to the wishes. Well, again, that would be it could be a restricted gift. Yeah, you know, but that but what, that's why we need to have in place an acceptance policy so that we can, when somebody were to come to us and say, "This is what we'd like to do. We've got some free M stock that we'd like to to uh, to donate." Um, but we would prefer that you use the dividends from the stock and hang on to the stock because we really this has done our family a lot of good for the, and whatever you know how that goes. And the policy would then be read and say that's not what we do. If you want us to receive the dividends, you can have them directed to us. All right. And you keep ownership of it. So um, that shadow committee that we heard about just a little earlier. Yeah, where are they now? <laughs> where are they now? <laughs> Getting busy over there. Yeah. Uh, I would I would think that we need to refer this to the to the policy committee that we really need to uh, have a little a, bit more work on it. Yeah. And one question I've got is, um, in the in the organizations I'm familiar with, life insurance it's only prepaid life insurance that is accepted. Uh, you may have more to say about that. Um, you know, I'm trying to think that... I mean, we don't want to re receive a policy that we have to make. <laughs> oh, right, exactly, exactly. It would be making, we have picking up the premiums on. But we're paying premiums. Right. Yeah. So, anyway. So, who's the committee? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> and I, well, I, no, I think both Kurt and Marion are on that committee. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know their level of expertise, so I, I, I guess it would be uh, make a bit more sense for some folks who understand 
this kind of giving and the details that are potentially involved sure. to participate in the process. Do we know who that is? Uh, it sounded like it was Bart. Well, I thought it was more you. I think it should be both. I, yeah, I think we I mean, I can yeah. take a look yeah, at I can, it, I can, I can, yeah. I, but I, you've got technical knowledge. I'll, I'll also show up with, to my financial advisor. My husband was the director of plan giving for the University of Minnesota Foundation, so he's fairly knowledgeable. Yeah. So I would like us to get a policy. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah we'll come back with it. I think it's a good start. Really. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a wonderful yeah. start. Yeah. 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 We've got to plug some holes. And, yeah. 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 and I yeah. think we should subsume this other policy, the library, the donated materials should get incorporated. So there's just one policy and that's approved. Yeah, and these mm -hmm. materials in this one. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. with this, with basically, <coughs> uh, as a result of this particular conversation, um, changing the, the beginning of the world to May, which is something that we were taking a look at, the joint library may accept the following gifts. As opposed to the right, and then in that third bullet, it stocks, bonds, or other investments. That's sort of like in parentheses, which would be immediately or well, convert to cash upon receipt or something like that. And then the only other thing uh, I just recently mentioned uh, the life insurance would have been identified as only prepaid. I'm assuming there are other things that are in there, of course, but right. the only things I guess I was hearing is conversation. You don't want to be having to put out money to make no. money. No. <laughs> that's not. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Am I done now? No, one more no, item. One more. Oh, what is it? No, link it's the links. The, uh, and this oh. again is something that I discovered. Um, it turns out that the only municipality that has a link to the library from their webpage is. The, the village of North Hudson is a link to the library, but um, the other pages I think have been revised and updated. Or oh well. anyway, <laughs> somebody said I'm sure there's a link on the on the Hudson Library on the Hudson webpage to the library, and there's a link of, to lots of different other organizations, but not to the library. So um, I suggested that we make the request to the we municipalities ask. that we can always ask. Right? We can always ask. And um, it was and the response was, well, you you need to make sure you've got a link to the municipalities on your website. And we do. So we we people wanted to find the links to the municipalities, we've got those links for them. But it's not the reverse. And I'm sure it's it's not intentional, it's an oversight and just I think a simple request will probably make it happen. Okay. Um, yeah, funding is to a certain extent we should. <laughs> would there be any reason that would be objectionable? And that I can think of it. No, I mean, I can't, link, I, I can't. a link to the library from, yeah. from the town to the village or the city? I, think that I don't think so. Yeah. I can't. I, guess, yeah, now, I think it's an oversight or just. Anyway. Yeah, it's just one of those things. We, we out in the boonies, we just don't, didn't think about it. You know, yeah. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Uh, it makes sense. Yeah. We wouldn't have a link to the fire department or ambulance, probably, but, but something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we and that's that's we support them as well. You know. Right. In but contractual, they're, they're contractual basis. Right, you know, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. city, but I can't imagine why we wouldn't be receptive for an ambulance. Right? The city of Hudson should. I mean, we're right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I was. That is a community I, I couldn't research. believe oh, yeah, it, to be honest. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Given the other link, place or organizations you link to, yeah. I would have thought that. Anyway. So, I think that, anyway. Okay. You all done? I'm done. Sounds good. Uh, should I send a letter? Just. Uh -huh. I, I, I think I, yep. that would be wonderful. Just a gentle request. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anybody here from the Friends like to make a comment? Foundation? No? Okay. Uh, my comments. Um, of course, everybody's aware that we had our retreat, uh, otherwise known as a communication forum. Mm -hmm. 
Is that right? Unfortunately, I had to excuse myself early from that. Um, so I was not available, but we, we did have a meeting uh, last night, in fact, uh, and went over much of the results and comments, and uh, I think it was a great success. I think, um, from what I've seen so far, I think it, it is a worthwhile endeavor. I think uh, it's money that was well spent, but now it comes all back to us, which is what we had kind of said. You know, I mean, that's what happens when you bring a consultant in. They'll tell you what to do, but then it's going to come upon us to provide follow through. And I think we've got a great start. First product that you guys have seen was uh, was the fundraising letter for our annual annual event, and uh, they've got uh, they've got a lot of work ahead scheduled for us and uh, work that we didn't really recognize we thought we needed to do. Uh, and in fact, I think probably the most important thing is that you're all aware of the, the three groups that have come together to try to put together a big fundraising effort, those being uh, the library board, the foundation, friends of, and in conjunction also with the community uh, fund. Uh, that wanted to piggyback on this and help us out. Um, their recommendation is that they believe that we really are nowhere near uh, having the ability to do that quite yet, that we need to take some baby steps first, the annual campaign being the first one, and that's somewhere a little further down the road we'll be, we'll be in, uh, in better shape in order to do that. So, um, and they, uh, they are more than willing to come in here. I think we suggested at the next meeting to, to share the results and have a conversation with us about any of that. So, Barb, anything? Well, I think the other thing that's important is that um, one of the, one of the um, preliminary steps is um, around developing a stronger, probably, well, the, the friends in the foundation may well merge into a single organization um, and that would be a stronger um, organization in terms of taking the lead on fundraising for on behalf of the library that um, the public in general is more um, open more willing to give funds to private entities than to the public entity and so but that currently um, there's no one. No one knows when they when they want to give a gift to the library should go to the friends, to the foundation, to the library board. Um, having greater uh, clarity about that, and and so the very first step um, that is that the foundation and the friends are going to their boards are going to meet and talk about the possibility of how they can work together more effectively, and that might be a merged organization or it might be organizations staying separate but with very clearly defined responsibilities, a lot of clarity about who's going to do what with regard to fundraising. Um, and, and certainly, um, it, it appears pretty certain that the foundation, um, the members of the foundation are um, willing to change the purpose of their foundation which was for capital. That, I mean, that was what the, the 501c3 was set up to do, was to raise money for capital or endowment and to change that purpose so that they can, in fact, take on um, fundraising for operational purposes as well as uh, an annual campaign. So um, I think that's a real, a real positive, um, that there's um, an appetite. I think that the other thing is that they're, both of those organizations feel that they will need an infusion in um, human capital, um, new people, <laughs> to um, take on some of these roles. Um, and so um, I guess one of the things to be thinking about is in your, in your purview, are there people who you might recommend who could, who are, um, who have the skill set to help take on um, a, a strong um, support organization for the library. And that might be fundraising, it might be in 
advocacy or it might be in um, marketing and um, so um, it's, it's a, it's a multi-pronged event uh, but we clip there's a there's an appetite for change but there are um, is a concern that the, the skill sets are, are and the resource the, the human capital resources aren't necessarily available in those organizations right now so recruiting more people um, and of course the the library strategies organization has a lot of expertise in this area. So. Yeah. I think it's up. So. so they'll be on the on the schedule on the agenda for next month, and they're looking forward to it. I think they, they've done a nice job, nice report. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, um, in terms of the survey results, the the clearest thing of what people want are for hours, <laughs> open money, open money. Monday, open Monday was a, a constant yeah. refrain. Even Sunday came Even play. Sunday, but open Monday was yeah. a constant refrain. So, questions? Okay, that's really all I've got. Finance Committee? Uh, regularly recurring expenditures that have been the board of proposal. I'm going to go to the next one which says there are recurring expenses that are not within budget. It was a purchase of a computer which put our technology uh, fund over budget and that was because one of the computers went down and you had to get out and get a computer to replace that. Uh, finance committee, uh, even though it is over budget, recommended approving it based on the fact that the overall expenditures uh, are $27,000 below last year at this point in time. So. Our expenditures are well under control, and that on an individual circumstance required to go over that line item budget, and so we we've approved that expenditure. Did we not only do that once? Is that not? I thought we approved. Um, this is Linda's computer. That this is Linda's yeah. computer. Oh. I think it was another one. That it was another it was one. Okay. Computer. Oh, yes, okay. All okay. right, so, so with that, uh, we did review the recurring expenses. Everything seems to be in line. Um, as I said, the overall expenditures are down $27,000 from last year. So everything is tracking fairly well on the expenditure side. Um, so we're making a recommendation to approve claims for $79,429.06. So as the chairman, I'll make a motion to make the approval of that. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded approval of the uh, expense for computer seventy nine thousand four hundred twenty. Oh, that's for the recurring. Uh, from nineteen ninety. <laughs> uh, recurring claims, yeah. Okay, recurring claims. Sorry about that. I can buy eight servers for that. Yeah, really. <laughs> seventy nine thousand four twenty nine oh six. Further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion prevails. Okay. Uh, there was a agenda item here on the insurance claims, and all we would say there is that we got the insurance claims from Chubbs for fourteen thousand seven hundred seven hundred and twenty-one dollars and fifty-one cents, and we've made the payment to the uh, company for the restoration of the library. So the insurance claim came in, and the expenditure went out. Okay. I noticed that. Well, while it was reported at last month's meeting that this check from St. Joe had come in, it didn't show. That's not been here. We don't have it yet. You so don't have it yet. Uh, oh. There's, there's a balance due from St. Joe of about $39,000. Right. Because I was going to follow up, but I thought at our last meeting we said that the check had been received. We were well, told that. Oh, that's what we were told by you the deal, but it wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> So we're a long ways from I know, I know. I sent the invoice to, I talked with the, the clerk. I sent the invoice and she said at the next meeting, which was going to be the following day or the day after, they would approve the payment. I asked me about 4.30 or 4 o'clock today and they, we did not have it recorded, but Kathy is behind because of the um, elections. But he will let me know when it's there. Okay. And I'll just kind of keep on about it. Okay, okay. So it's not in somebody else's account. Okay. Rich? That's all I have. Okay. Uh, all 
policy personnel committee. Report, do we have no report? Okay. No, no report. Got it. Good job. That'll be the last time that happens for a while. <laughs> Any uh, comments or items for future agendas? I do. Kurt Weiss, this is his third meeting that he's not attended in the role. Do we want to bring him to it and do we want to address it or not? As a board? No, I don't think that we have, frankly, that we have the authority to address okay. that. And then, should I put on here that library strategies will be attending the next meeting? Yes. Anything else we need to add? I didn't hear anything else. Um, well, an update on policy, an update <coughs> on your review. Okay. Procedure. Procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Procedure. Okay. Anything else? What? I'm just going to ask a question. Uh, I was confused by something I, I um, read about. North Hudson's was in the paper contribution to the, their payment to the library being reduced. They uh, in their preliminary budget hearing meeting they um, they reduced the allocation for uh, for their share to the default legislative minimum, which is a three year average. So essentially, it's more than than. Uh, it's less than this year than, than, than their coming year, but more than um, what they had been providing us prior to the 5% that they agreed to. Um, we won't know the, how they're going to dispense of that until they meet again. They'll meet for a, budget, a final budget meeting, and uh, I'm sure it'll be an item for discussion. Um, City of Hudson? Last night, Matt? Did they discuss that? No, they did not. Pardon me? Did not? No, they did not. I mean, uh, the, the Hudson share? The Hudson share of the library? Yeah. No, it's in the budget, though. Uh, I don't remember the exact number. I okay. thought it was like, I don't remember the exact number that's in the budget, but it is in, there is a number in the budget, and it's going to be probably more than it was last year. I just don't remember what it was. Okay. I think it's up by two percent or something. I think they've increased it by two percent. Okay. I don't remember the exact number. Yeah, I thought uh, Al had said he was thinking yeah. it was two to three percent. Dan. I mean, the only reason I ask is I was wondering if anybody had a sense for that being a trend. Uh, I don't believe it is. Okay. You asking me to respond? Yeah. yeah. We increased our allowance to the library. Okay. Um. The, the, the requested amount via the books. Well, I love I love using the term heads of state. Yeah. Um, I think the requested amount for their discussions was two percent. And I think we had to get a little better. Than that. Excellent. Okay. Proud to be from the audience. Yes. Is that final? <laughs> or is that preliminary? It's final. Final. Oh, is that our budget? Final. Our budget has been approved by the town electors. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. it, it has been. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I Thank lobby. You. I lobby for an extra percent. Yeah. Thank no you. No problem with the town board. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. Okay. Motion uh, second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everybody.